What's going on, Action Army? What's happening, guys? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the official Action Army show. Welcome to the most important hour of your life this week. If you're not watching this show, you're probably a Jackass or a Lion's Den fan. Yeah, guys, it's basically a fucking call to action. Just kidding, it's exactly what it is, okay? This is the intro to Call to Action, the single most important piece of content you're going to ingest in the next seven minutes. If you love Action Army and you love Ben and Drew, then this is the place to be. And if you don't love us, well, then fuck you. Go buy a suit, get it fitted, get the pants tailored so the length is just right, the break of your pants looks fantastic, get a bottle of Jameson and get on fucking board. Peace out. What's up, assholes? Welcome back to the Call to Action podcast. I'm James. Hey, it's Melissa. And we have a lot to talk about because it's spectacular and our dad's got a divorce. Who's ready for a Aww. fun time? <laughs> Uh. So, having yeah. never covered, yeah. So, <laughs> we've never covered this spectacular before, so this will be fun. Um, as you see, I'm repping the only team who will never die, which mm. uh, I'm using comedy to hide my deep, deep sadness. <laughs> and I'm repping five foot nothing, a hundred and nothing, Notre Dame, woo woo, but. I am not representing Team Action, unfortunately, because is Team Action a thing anymore? We will see. Yeah, so hopefully we get Who's the Boss merch, even though I think they're going face, which <laughs> doesn't excite me, but whatever, because Riley had the black jacket and it meant he was going to be like Superman, go dark, but whatever, back to the match. <laughs> So, um, I think both of, did you skip the whole like 30 minute like I did. I honestly like the first few like big matches where they had that, I actually did watch it quite a bit, but like eventually it got to the point where I like I just kind of skipped over it. I skipped over it here this time too. I think the last one I remember watching um Robert from Late to the Party did it. Since then it's just been like it's half an hour of shit that isn't the match, isn't important right. storyline. I mean, I think last time Drew kind of featured pretty heavily, so I think I remember watching that. I should go back and watch that then. <laughs> but it was where like he came in with his like cane and Pound the cane. Yeah. So, but I mean, other than that, I I pretty much skipped it. I skipped it straight, pretty much straight to the match yeah right and so we see in part one we will get the episode of fife which i don't like being split up like this because ah uh, this is not a good streak to start no um, we, it's we not a good way to start the match or start the video no it's also a bad way to end the match because for the final score we have tom badino at 11 points we have uh, Thad Williams and Christian Harloff at 12 points and Emma Fife at 13 points going into sudden death. I do think it's interesting how um, in the round two, two of them spun, spun opponent's choice, which was, like, which was a fun dynamic because no one really yeah. got their strength. No one ran away with it. Thad did a kick-ass job. I think him and uh, Emma did like, did like five out of six, which is nice. Mm -hmm. But, you know... Christian was a champion. He did fairly well in the Patreon match. And he lost to Emma Fife. What the f Yeah. Again, well, Thad I believe I believe in the last video I may have mentioned Thad as my dark horse in this match. So, I'd like to say that I was proven right because he really did like almost get there. Uh I was thoroughly disappointed in the outcome. I mean, yeah. I mean, between Thad and Christian, I would have rather Thad won um, just to see how it would have, like, taken the storyline, If you know, what would have happened there. Whereas if Christian won, I think everyone's expecting Christian to win and probably just be like, ha, I'm the commissioner now. But, like, it would have been interesting to see how if Thad won, things kind of shook out. But, man, when I knew that Emma had that last question, I was just like, 
And see, the worst part yeah. is you mentioned, like, you mentioned Thad being interesting for storylines and Christian just being a gimme. MF5 is probably the least interesting person to win this because if Thad and Christian lost, at least you have Tom Dagnino who can – people asking for him to be commissioner for years. And mm-hmm. that's Emma Fife who – say what you will about Fife Club, Shy Wolves, whatever your opinion on that. She's not an interesting commissioner. She doesn't have anything to bring. No. Well, and of the five of the five people in this match, if I were to rank them of like who I wanted to win, Emma was probably like number five. So four. like I'm just really who do you have below her? There are four people in the match. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay. Great of the spectacular, people, everybody. I I I I dislike her so much that I put her below the, the number of I people in the match. Man, to get up from the table and say, I organize this event. It's my event, motherfuckers, and walk out and sit at the table again. But no. Yes. She had to say yes. yeah, it would have been a perfect commissioner. Uh, yeah. But also mistaken, yeah. isn't it just like a character title? Like, I'm not sure what they do outside of it. Yeah, my guess is, like, my guess is in real life they wouldn't really do much of anything. It'd probably just be for show, mainly. Yeah, that's come out at the, Come out at the events and, like, say hi to people and say welcome to blah, blah, blah. And then they have, like, their videos. And that's probably pretty much it. Everything else is probably still going to be going through other people. Yeah. So, mainly a figurehead. Yeah. And but, how did you feel about that reveal of Polly G? I um, wasn't surprised. Uh, I would have been surprised if it happened the way it happened, which I wasn't, I don't want to say I'm, I was expecting, but I wasn't surprised by it either. Um, I would have been surprised if he went, if Christian had gone like, Full heel, like if he would have just been like swearing at Mark Ellis, and like yeah, if he would have like just came out and been like, yeah, turned turned completely heel, then like I would guy levels are a little bit like Andrew guy levels or or higher, like literally betray just betraying everybody for today. Andrew guy's a tough heel to be. (laughs) <laughs> this is true, but um, that would have surprised me. But the fact that he was behind it all, oh, God, why do I do that? The fact that he was behind it all doesn't surprise me at all. It was not a shock. Um, and he did it to get back into the commissionership, I guess. there He doesn't seem to really have a purpose behind it other than just getting back into the commissionership. I... I he seems to be kind of the same person he was prior to the reveal, so uh, and not I, surprised. To me, that builds up this idea of like it's it felt like a big letdown because Kalinowski changed the league with corruption, and then suddenly there's someone controlling him. That feels like mm-hmm. it's just something like monumentous, right? And then you get yeah. Christian being revealed, and it's just like, yeah, so it's actually I was controlling you to do what I wanted for the storyline to get my title back. Uh, yeah, Thad, you're not fired. Don't worry, Emma, you're a commissioner. Something big should happen. You had a, a, like half a year of buildup. Kalinowski turned heel and sort of like created an inner geekdom league in June. This should be something important and big, and it was just wasted. It was. I mean, I feel like he planted some seeds. Like he talked about how... Emma would be a commissioner, which kind of leads to like, oh, what does he mean by that? But I mean, other than that, other than those like small, tiny seeds being planted, it wasn't like this huge, like it wasn't this huge thing um, that came up. So I don't know. It wasn't like, see, I I had mentioned that if it was, um, if it was Mark Ellis, like that would have been like 
amazing or I mean not Mark Ellis but anyone like if it would have been someone surprising it would have been like crazy but the fact that it was kind of expected out of Christian but then that he didn't really do anything with it other than just like what we would have expected all along it was a little disappointing but the only good thing that I can say that came out of it is Emma doesn't have like full reign over the schmodown which I mean, when she won, like, really my, dead to beat. <laughs> my, like, my gut was, like, in my, like, my, like, it just sank because I was just, like, oh, my God, this is going to be insufferable. Like, I don't, <laughs> this is going to be the most insufferable year of the Schmodown to have her in charge. So, when he was able to kind of say, I'm still in charge, that, that was, like, the one redeeming point of him, all that happening. Just like to backtrack a little bit, I think Mark would have been a great choice. But even just like if you go back to Brienne, because she had the whole working with Kalinowski thing, and the second he lost the both team, both singles uh, number one contenders matches, and the um, the match against Action, that the whole story, that whole storyline was just wasted. Especially with Brienne, you know, winning the free for all belt, there would have been a great chance for him to challenge and geek to him, or to work with uh, Adam again. Or whoever for teams. Meanwhile, it like I feel like the whole Kalinowski storyline after all this time was just squandered. And I loved like in the yeah. middle of it, but now that we've reached the end of the story, it wasn't worth the actual journey. No, and I think there was even a moment where like on the desk, Ellis was talking about commissionership. He's talking about like what a commissioner should do or be on behalf of the league or something, and it it sounded like he was describing Brienne and you could kind of see a look on her face. Like it, I thought it was a look on her face of like saying like, Hmm, that sounds like me. And so I really thought we were going to get like a surprise Brienne in the match or a surprise, like Polly working with Brienne. Um, I really did think like that was potentially coming, but yeah, it didn't really pay off. And I will admit, I was list. I the only match I actually sat down and watched was who's the boss in Shire Wolves and Irwin and Roca, because everything else I was at work doing. I was literally shoveling dirt and sweeping streets for eight hours today, so I didn't have time to watch matches. I I did, I did use my lunch break for who's the boss because I was ready. Oh, that's rough. I don't know that I'd be able to go back to work after that. <laughs> I think I so like... Because here's a fun story. I have like serious back pains. So bending over, sweeping a street all day, doing hard labor wasn't great. But I can fight through it sometimes. But then just victory being snatched away like that <laughs> and, and Ben getting tackled, I just felt all will to just do anything drain out of my body. I just wanted to go home and curl up in my bed and eat a I whole pint of ice cream and just yes. cry. Yes. Oh, I couldn't. I had, to, I had to make that paper, you know? <laughs> that was pretty rough. I mean, it's just something like I didn't, I just, I didn't see it coming. I mean, despite the fact that they've kind of had like Ben and Riley sort of edging towards becoming a permanent thing for a while, I still didn't see this coming like i i just always thought it would be like andrew was maybe, like the manager right andrew would still be a part of it somehow or like the the faction that they kind of jokingly teased or whatever but like i really didn't expect like a betrayal storyline like that really kind of took me by surprise because there was there's not not been any build up to it. There's not been any like normally, and and it could be because Drew's such a good actor, like I mentioned last time. But usually, you can see some of these things coming, like when in the post match interviews or things like that. You can sort of see like these things coming, and with I never saw this coming, so. I don't know if we want to talk about the match first or the, <laughs> the aftermath first. It very well right now, but I'm just like, 
I'll get into the yeah. questions later. But something I talked <laughs> about on the um, like the reaction thing, whatever, on the main page. It's fitting they covered Revenge of the Sith this week, because I could just I could hear I could hear in the background just like you were my brother Ben, I loved you, and then yeah. just taken just take the lightsaber and da, ah, yeah, and I mean I, yeah. And then, I mean, your brother, just to keep the analogy going, just warrior, Tommy and Brendan Collin, just, I, I, because we were going to have the, Bre- the, um, I call him Brandon, the Ben and Andrew, um, number one contenders match, assuming Roka lost, which sadly he didn't. And now we can get that next season because Ben's coming off a two win streak and a loss. And then so is Andrew. So I wouldn't mind, like, if they both take a while out of singles, who's the boss works on their, teams thing andrew works on whatever he's gonna do probably getting banned again for all we know i wouldn't mind if the first match back was just those two in singles maybe even at like collision if i can, if we can wait that long because i really just want i need i need andrew to come out just alone and fight like a wolf in a corner and ben to come out with you know mark riley tom and you know, whoever else is going to work with him by then with that like triumphant opera music really getting the warrior style and they just want, I want them to make up. Have you seen warrior? No. God damn it. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was ready to spoil. I was ready to spoil the movie. Cause you know, action fans, you've seen, we've seen everything. I probably, I probably won't watch it. It's Tom Hardy, right? Yes. Yeah. I probably won't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, just give, me, give me a second. Boo! <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying that because it's Tom Hardy. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just saying. What is wrong with Tom Hardy? Well, no, I'm not saying it because it's Tom Hardy. I just, it's like MMA, right? Is it? Yeah. And I'm just not really into MMA. Like it was boxing, maybe, but. But. It's 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 like boxing, but with feet, and it still has the emotions of boxing. Well, if I cared about kicking with feet, I would watch children all day, but I don't. And then, <laughs> and then they choke each other, and again, it has feelings. There's sadness and alcoholism and attachment issues. I feel like we're, moving. <laughs> I feel so like we're moving away from the schmodown. <laughs> We're, hey, we're we're a team action show first and foremost. So we're you know off the rails. Movie anatomy, best episode they've had. We're <laughs> off the rails. Okay, so with, with match. Me as host, what else do you expect? <laughs> Let's go back to the match. Final score: um, thirty-one to thirty-four in favor of the Shire Wolves, winning it on their five-pointer. I mean, do you really have any insight into it? Like, it just it. It was a good match, but it never felt like it never felt I don't know how to describe it, but like like when Team Action played top ten or like when the Patriots played above the line, it just like it never felt like it had like this I'm gonna say a John Roca word. It never felt like it had like this gravitas to it. It just like it was a good match and it was a close match. And like even going into like round two it was. They like, had a two point advantage, I believe. Right. And they like both had perfect round something. twos, I believe. And so, like, that was really good. I think at the speed round is where it started to kind of come apart. And then from there on, it was just not much of a match. It was just kind of. Well, see, so here, here's why I disagree. Because I think the, like, the buildup was great because you had the Shy Wolves' is like praise women entrance, which you I know you might want to get into later. And you had like I think the big deciding factor in like knowing this is a big thing for who's the boss was Ben's red suit because he changed it up. He put effort into his appearance differently than normal, which to me speaks like it's something special. But what really builds it up is that five pointer because they're out of I think I think this is the right match. I don't know. They're out of repeats. They have very little, limited time to actually get the answer correct, and it's a it's 
a fairly deep cut. I haven't watched a lot of the Jason Bourne movies, so I'm not sure how relatively deep it is. But it's a good five-point question. And they get mm-hmm. it. So you turn to the Shire Wolves. Number whatever category is romantic comedies. All right, this, this could be this could be a deep cut. What rom com stars Matthew McConaughey and Jennifer Garner? Like, I don't care about if you knew the question or not, and if you, like how difficult it was for you to get that. That is not the same level of question because you're at because I'll, I'll use like some uh, short on rundown terminology here because. Asking about like who stars in the movie, who directed, that is not screen time knowledge. You can look that up on IMDb or Wikipedia. You can know it from there. A five-point question should require you to watch a movie. And if it's not, that has to be a deep cut. Ghost of Girlfriend's Past was like one of the highest grossing movies of, what, 2006 that it came out? Whenever it is? That is not the same level of difficulty. And I, I mean, maybe it's just me. I seem to notice that in a lot of these matches where they have a particular angle, they want to push the story. They, the, the last question, the five pointer seems to be lenient. Like we saw in uh, Mike versus Mara. Or no, it was, uh, yeah, Mike versus Mara and Inman versus Mara. Each time the five point question for Mike and Inman were incredibly hard. And that's not to take away from Marta's actual level of skill, because she is an amazing competitor. But her question, her five point, her five point question each time was was a fair amount easier than yeah. the one Mike and Inman got. Yeah, agreed. And I feel like so. A couple things with that is I feel like um. And this is like nothing against Chris Skaliski because I really like him a lot. And he is like a huge Remember the Titans nerd like I am. So like he he and I are very much on the same page. But um it it like it would have been different if he would if there would have at least been plot plot parts to it in the question, like in this romantic comedy, Matthew McConaughey plays a blah, 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 who does this with Jennifer Garner, blah, 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 blah. Then, like, if there's plot points in there, at least, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know, at least, the only way I could see, like, name the movie from this director or this actor or whatever being, like, worthy of a five pointer is if it's such an obscure movie or like it was just a movie that just tanked and like no one saw it and like it it like it debuted number 15 on the like weekend list like if it's a movie that like no one remembers then like i can i can like give that the benefit of the doubt and say okay well maybe that would be okay as a five point question but it would have to be really 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 obscure otherwise i think you're right Um, i think it needs to be yeah i think it needs to be plot specific or at least comparable but yeah i don't know tell me how this sounds to you because it might fit your criteria um ethan hawk and julie delphi star in what movie directed by Richard Richard Linklater that is not a part of the Before trilogy? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, well, I don't Linklater. know that. It is Waking Light in 2001 with the um like the cell shaded motion capture technology. I don't know what the actual term is, but see in that one you, it requires you to watch the movie because it's like a middle segment in a movie that no one has seen. So even though they're no, even yeah. knowing that they're in the cast, you don't know that they're Jesse and Celine. Right. Yes. And I think, I mean, it did take them, it did take the Shire Wolves a little bit to get it. So, I mean, I, 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 I think I, they I, barely got it, but I mean, I think they really just, I think they kind of had to dial back into their like memory bank and like think of their IMDb like memorization that they did and they got it but i mean i i don't know i think that's like, about I, is like, i don't I know if either of them saw too. the movie but like if you're if you're talking about like matthew mcconaughey rom-coms 
you basically you start at um link uh, not lincoln lawyer um amadeus no amistad in 1998 i believe to dallas buyers club in 2013. that's about 15 years of movies you can go through which for mcconaughey isn't that hard to the point that i literally i guessed ghost of girlfriends past because it was just the only one it was either that or how to lose a guy in 10 days yeah yeah so it's it's on like process of elimination especially with two uh repeats that is not a fair question no and I think, like, had it not been either How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days or Girls, Ghosts of Girlfriend Pass, um, if it had been some random movie that if, if no it, one had ever heard of. Stealth, it could have been fine. <laughs> stealth, no one saw. <laughs> yeah, no, if no one's ever heard of it, then, like, that makes it a fair, fair question. But, I mean, like, imagine, imagine if the question had been matthew mcconaughey and kate hudson like that would have been the easiest five pointer in the history of five pointers but it's not all that different like i mean it's not really all that different of a question that you know between matthew mcconaughey and kate hudson or matthew mcconaughey and jennifer garner it's the same question so it's not really like it's just not that difficult i don't think but because, oh, well. again, you can correct me on this because I wasn't, like, super cognizant of Matthew McConaughey at the time. But Ghost of Girlfriend's Past should have been, been, like, a big movie. Because I remember even watching my, like, Disney DVDs when I was growing up, I still saw trailers for Ghost of Girlfriend's Past on the DVD. That's how, like, wide-reaching it was. I would see it on, like, trailers for movies that I – or I would see it on DVDs for movies totally unrelated to it. It should yeah. be pretty big. Yeah, well, and I think it's another, like, it's a movie that, like, okay, if if you had said a Sandra Bullock rom-com and you didn't entirely know what it was and you just guessed the lake house, like, you just guessed it, like, I feel like Ghosts of Girlfriends Past is, like, that same, I think it's just one of those things you, you didn't even have to, like, that would be, like, a guess, like, it wouldn't even be, like, the, an educated guess. It wouldn't even be, like, something you'd have to put that much thought into. It'd be, like, just name a Matthew McConaughey rom-com. That's going to be one of your guesses. So, I mean, I just think it's just not that difficult. I will say, going back to, you mentioned Ben coming out in the red, in the red, which he looked lovely. He looked lovely, by the so way. My style, by the way. I wore. I, I was getting ready to say that. I was getting ready. I was getting ready to mention. <laughs> I was getting ready to mention that he stole your he stole your outfit. But you remember? I, I did. Well, it's hard to forget. But um, I will. Uh, I will say like one thing is Ben when he's in his all black. I always think to like how he always respected Roka as like the man in black, like like the like like Will the Smith outlaw. in 1999 <laughs> well or more Tessa like Thompson Johnny in 2019 because goddamn <laughs> I, I think it was more like Johnny Cash but <laughs> the point is like him in his all black always kind of him and his all black always kind of reminded me of like him like wanting to be like this like I don't want to say rogue. Rogue is the wrong word, but like, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if the color is a changing of the guard from from the super serious Ben to a more playful Ben. But <laughs> I don't know. I I'm, I'm sure. really. I'm almost expecting Ben to go face next season. I really I... don't want it to happen. But I am nice. too. Okay, here's where here's where I'm here's where I'm going with this. I don't know if they would go this crazy. Would they 
say that Ben got like a concussion or some sort of amnesia situation from his tackle. And then like, (laughs) and then like, stop. And then like, then like at the end of next season, like his memories come back and like him and him and Andrew like reunite. Like, Oh, he goes, he goes, (laughs) (laughs) give me one second. I mean, I know Alex Damon Forrest projected his his own image, (laughs) but no, I don't think that'll happen. Well, I'm just saying, like, I could, I don't know, I could see, I could, like, I mean, they're trying to, they're doing like WWE style storylines, so I don't think that's that out of. I, I would almost prefer if, he, if if Ben went full what women want, what women want, <laughs> and just had the ability to read the minds of other competitors. <laughs> now that would be interesting. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So obviously we were both very disappointed in the results of the match. Um, did, is there anything other than the match, like anything match related that you think we missed or do you want to move on to um, kind of the major moment? That, <laughs> that I, I honestly just like that, that they ran the table of festival darlings because yeah. I knew I would have, huh? huh? But I, I, I like seeing the category get play because it's one that I think doesn't get a lot of love, but I absolutely <laughs> adore playing along with. Because it's yeah, cause people, it's a really shallow pool, honestly. Because festival darlings isn't really a term we hear we heard used before like 2012, 2013. Right. So you have like what six years of movies to study, and they're all fairly high profile, or at the very least, you could do some minor research. Because even just being the movie fan that I am, I've heard of all of these movies, and I can get the answers right without even seeing them. Mm-hmm. I was really kind of surprised, like, Ben wasn't as enthused about it, like, when they spent it the first time, because, I mean, obviously, he goes to a lot of these, like, like, film festivals and, and film premieres and things like that, so I would think that'd be kind of up his alley, I don't think he goes to festivals, actually. Really? Yeah. I, I know he goes mm. to premieres. And I know he's gotten some, like, high travels and stuff. I know he travels a lot, so I just I kind of yeah. assumed that he was, like... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's just, stuff. like... Because I know, like, um, following ETC for as long as I did, they went to um, Cuba or something to do the DVD release of Fate, uh, Fate of the Furious. So it could honestly just be that for doing interviews. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. So, anyway, so. Do you really want to dive into this post credits thing? Uh, I guess we're going to have to. I, I, I'm asking because I, I don't know if we are because I know we're like just scattershotting everywhere. I wish I, because I would love to just get like the full transcript of what they said just so I could just read along with it. Tears right. stained the paper. Well, one thing I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm definitely curious about is if they had won if the if the if who's the boss would have won i'm definitely curious how that would have played out if it would have played out the same way or if they would have i I don't know i'm just very curious how it would have played out but like when he so when ben first took his jacket off and like threw it i kind of like thought oh it's the return of is the yeah. return of angry Ben like he's gonna come back to like the dark side like he like you know Riley's kept him like above board for a little bit but you know he's he's getting mad he's throwing his jacket he's he's gonna be back and back on the dark side before long and yeah I'll let you I'll let you talk about your your thoughts <laughs> That's all I can really do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Like, well, yeah. Yeah. I, I will say, though, like, we harassed a, a very certain person for crying at 
um, Dan Murrow losing to Andrew Guy. And I think it was me in particular who said something like, how do you cry at movie trivia? I apologize for my past self. I didn't realize the pain I could feel. But in my yeah. defense, there was, little, there was literal pain that day. Because Andrew tackled Ben and broke a podium. He did. He did. It must have been an IKEA special. <laughs> they must have. They must have specifically went to IKEA to get something that's breakable. Oh, um, yeah. I, I really I, hope that that it doesn't like impact Andrew in the future because I want him to come back next season. I want his next team to do something like have him team up with like Janine or. Are there any like free agents in terms of teams right now? Because Brian I mean, is going to no, stick with Brian, whoever his name is, for sick in the head. No, other than like I wondered about like McWeeny or. Oh, that'd be dangerous. <laughs> like I know that like Sam Levine's retired, but like maybe he comes out of retirement. But like I was thinking of like these just like completely like out of left field people that you wouldn't like. I love Janine, obviously, and that would be a, a perfect fit and a good match. But I guess I was thinking like completely like left field about it, like Mc, like I said, McWeeny or um, gosh, I don't, I don't even know, but like oh. just like just all these like random people that or like Mark Bernardin or I mean just like someone like completely out of the blue that you wouldn't expect. Well, so here's um, here's the way to break it down. I think. Because what we've had confirmed so far, just with general collider stuff, is that Harris Brothers Harris Brothers is continuing. Um, Self Righteous Brothers and Cinemaniacs are disbanded for critically acclaimed to come back. You have um, well, um, Brian and McQueenie, I, I believe, are still being a team, from last I heard, and. Um, we, well, we've, we've confirmed now that fa Founding Fathers are staying together. Which means only, there's a handful of single agents without teams. Erwin isn't going to go. Not, and so I think they're going to stick with like a big name for him. And, oh yeah, and um, the... What's, what's the Neil Simon play? The Odd Couple is sticking together. Because I think Roxy confirmed that on Collider Live. I think yeah. what's going to be very interesting and a very serious possibility is JTE. I was getting ready to say, I was getting ready to say yeah. that. JTE yeah. will team up with Andrew Guy to bring back, you know, heal him, whatever. If Harris Brothers lose to critically acclaimed, I think Andrew and JTE take a gimme, like a, um, whatever the Lion's Den was. Um, against the Shire Wolves. They, they get a gimme match, basically. And then Andrew and JTE go and face Harris Brothers. Because, technically, they're one and one Because we're not, I, I'm not going to count the Evil Geniuses win, and they got KO'd by who's the boss. So, it's a pretty big defeat. I think if they win their first match, which, again, can be simple. So you're or suggesting even... Return of the Night Sisters? <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Emma 5 is all high. See, so I actually pissed me off a little bit to backtrack a little bit. Um, Emma was... <laughs> when, she, no, when, when Emma lost to Janine, she's like, oh, I don't care about this because singles really isn't my, my league. I don't care about this loss. And then she goes and wins against Christian Harloff and Thad Williams, I guess, because apparently he's better than we all thought, even though his team disbanded as well. And she's like, oh, this is so great. I'm such a hard worker. I'm so, I'm so glad to be in this league and be inspired by all these wonderful women. So yeah, bring back the Night, night Sisters. Have Andrew yeah, Guy yeah. And kick their asses. I don't know. Although it would be nice, it would be nice to see jo Joelle Monique again because I miss her. I, I don't watch as much movie fights as I'd like to, and she's a wonderful person mm. on there. Yeah. Bring back the Night Sisters and have it be like, oh yeah, remember playing with Team Action? Yeah, you guys were fun. And Andrew's guy's just like, oh, I was in prison, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. The only thing about JTE and Andrew, which I think would be pretty a pretty good team, is Dagnino is linked up with Ben. And last we saw, Finstock and JTE were on good terms. So we'd either have to see like a JTE Finstock breakup or 
do they play both sides? Like, I don't, well, I don't know. In a perfect world, because this would require a lot of wins and losses on a bunch of sides. I think that team could pull an Andrew guy where, um, like, say, say the first match is a gimme, whatever. Second match is Harris Brothers for JTE to get his revenge on Lawn. Revenge. Second match mm-hmm. would be against Odd Couple for JTE versus Snyder. And then for the number one contender shot, you get them versus who's the boss for Ben and Finstock. Assuming mm. they the title by then, because they damn well should. Yeah. I yeah. think that'd be an amazing, like, few bits of story, because, like, Andrew just winding up and just going, or no, Andrew and JTE both just winding up and just going through everyone who's hurt them in the past. Yeah, the only thing about Andrew and JTE together is like just like closing my eyes and imagining them as a team, like imagining them working as a team. <laughs> like I, <laughs> between JTE and his incoherent, incoherent speaking, and Andrew's perfect diction, it's just like <laughs> very opposite. But it might work. Who knows? I don't know. Oh, hmm. This is this is, this is going to sound like morbid, but does does JTE have any like scars or anything? Um, I don't think so because I think I saw a picture from the um Christmas party they, and he was there and he seemed yeah. fine looking that I, I saw. I think it'd be cool if like it was um, I don't know like the pop culture exact comparison I could do, but say like if JTE went silent like Adam Gertler did. But instead of just being like, this is my shtick, my shtick, it's like he is like a monster. Mm. Yeah. It'd, it'd, be, it'd be like that where it's like, JTE, what do you have to say? Urgh. Right. <laughs> then they're going to go over there and kick your asses. Treat, treat you prison style, motherfucker. Like, I think Andrew Guy could sell that. And if JTE went full stone face, like, set aside the character of Wilmo del, del Toro and try to say the Terrace Taurus Tops, I think if he went silence, like, I would call. I think just like the monster JT rather than little evil, I think that could be a lot of fun to play with. And Andrew Guy is in this. I think he's he, he'd be really fun. I think they cover each other's weaknesses a little bit, especially because Andrew has the rom coms to play into. I think it'd be a potentially dangerous. Yeah. But um, anyway, so going into that situation, so we have Drew and Ben kind of talking about maybe a faction um, since Riley and Ben complimenting so, each other so well. Andrew's don't, got his don't you do his it. new teammate. Like it, don't it was it. like don't you do so, it? I'm not gonna do it. But it was it was very exciting. It was like oh okay. Oh. I, I thought you're going to go down the dark path. No. A, um, a, a, a this path. And I was ready to well, just hang up the call right now. I wasn't, no, I wasn't going there yet. But I mean, we oh, can we uh, can get into no, that. But... No. Okay. It is one thing for Ben Bateman to turn face, but I can handle that. What I can't handle is him going to side with fucking John Roca. I, I, can, I can't because, again, Look at the way John's played. Look at the way he's acted. He's an asshole. I don't want to root for that. I don't want Ben Bateman to turn around and, uh, like, he could be a tweener. Being a tweener's fine. Because that's what the horsemen are right now, other than Jason Inman. I don't want him to side with Roka. I don't want Ben Bateman to go out and be like, hey, Roka, you can win the next title. Just, uh I'm like a child throwing a fit right now, but I don't care. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm upset. Yeah. I'm upset. It, it would be interesting, but my, no, I mean, I think, bottle. I think, I think a horse, a horse, I think horse. a team action faction is something we've kind of all been talking about for a while now. And we've all kind of talked about how even if who's the boss lost, it would still be nice for Andrew to be a part of their team whether it's as a manager whether it's as um maybe like he gets a different teammate and is sort of like the sort of like the opposite 
team and within the faction we kind of all like speculated on that and um so i mean it wasn't like a huge surprise to see them like hug it out and like okay they're team action the team action faction is born woohoo and then just like out of nowhere like a flash across the screen and it's like oh my like my hopes and dreams just <laughs> poured out onto the floor like what are they doing to me they're just, just looking team action in the face and I, I, it's not fair. It is not fair. It is not fair. It's a bummer for sure, but what can we do other than hope hope there will be a reunion at some point? Do you have any, do you have any more words you want to say before we go to break? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, boo. Boo. Ooh. Piss. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your family. Dishonor on your cow. Yeah. No. Don't really have anything to say other than just um I will say, like, with this match being kind of like towards the beginning of the three matches, it kind of like soured my experience for the rest of the spectacular. I'll be honest, I was very soured until the very end. Yeah, I mean, like, I almost didn't watch the second video and third video. I almost just, like, was, like, yeah. I just don't think I want to watch the rest of it. Like, I was so just, like, so dejected. So yeah. the fact that we're even making this video at all is kind of a miracle because yeah. at that point I was kind of done. I was, like. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I was drained. I was ready to just say whatever. We can just push it back a week, whatever. But I was fine. And then I started taking notes, and I had to, I had to fast forward through the matches to see what the scores were. And the second, the second that I saw 31, 34, my hope, my heart just shattered. And I said, I don't want to do this. That's, that's yeah. how much this has impacted me. And I am just, oh, God. So, yeah. Um, we will be taking a break. And we will be talking about the video, video two, which we both watched, surprisingly enough. Uh, Barely, but you, yes. Yes. We will catch you back <laughs> after the break so we can go fill our, our little puddle of tears. Catch you on the flip side. Hello, guys. Welcome to the In Between segment. This is a transition for you and all the wonderful listeners of the show. Some people might even call this a commercial. So since it's a commercial, we're going to promote a couple things that you should check out. Check out patreon.com slash team action as well as Wednesdays you can find us on the action movie anatomy official show on the popcorn talk network do you feel we're being serene we certainly do also we're gonna kick the shit out of every other schmodown team in the entire league oh here comes the next segment see you in a minute Roka's a choker bye And we're back from the break. We have now overflown our puddle of tears. So we are ready to move on. Uh, the first match we have up is Clark versus Merle 2, whose outcome was unsurprising. I would think that's pretty much the best way to put it, unsurprising. I don't know that it would have been surprising either way, but um, definitely kind of uneventful would be a good another good word for it. Um, I will I, say I'm for looking, me, go ahead. I'm, I'm looking at it more from the point of view of when Clark played him before. I think it, I think it, sh it actually showed it in the yeah. setup. Like it was like a, a, a knockout was, 11 to yeah. four. Yeah. Brutal. And yes. Merle has, I think and Merle's actual like plan has just been like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So he, I, he's been like, I think he's been 500 this season so far. Or if not close to it, so him. I do think it could have gone either way. However, for some reason, I just felt like Clark wouldn't 
have won probably because of the like she she needed to work a lot on the previous match yeah i will say this was like a minor ray of light in this in this like and it's spectacular for me because emma had won and shire wolves had won so if clark had won like i didn't really have a preference between dan and clark that much but had Clark won, it would have been pretty much a clean sweep for the Fight Club, <laughs> which would have just been, it would have been intolerable. <laughs> so I was, I was glad to see that there was no clean sweep, uh, Fight Club wise. Um, pref I mean, I didn't have a preference either way between Dan and Clark, and I wasn't really surprised either way. Um, I figured Dan would win but it wouldn't have surprised me if it went the other way. And, um, but yeah, I mean, that means the people who are going to be out in New York are going to get a pretty good, pretty good match between Dan and um, the, win. the winner of <laughs> the winner of the match coming up later. Um, Big time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, well, we won't go back into my opinions of <laughs> of that but but yeah between dan and clark just nothing really to discuss i don't think i um friend of i won't even say friend of the show but like friend of ours paul Oyama, is tired of me in this because i'm when i'm out of time i'm sitting there and he got very angry at it i'm a little disappointed for the people in new york we get to see this because the headliner is a vacuum of charisma. <laughs> you have two people with not really a character, just what because you know damn well when they step on stage and give their little speech, it's going to be Jay and Roca just going at it, and then uh, e Ethan and um, Merle are just gonna be sitting, just me sitting there like, "Yep, what he said. I'm going to win. Let's go." If they're even out there, like they might just they could, <laughs> they could pull an M five and just <laughs> sit in the background, get ready in costumes. Yeah, I'm kind of curious if if Roka and Jay will be there. I didn't. I mean, I guess it never really occurred to me that like the managers would travel with them, but they might. I mean, I don't know. I guess it depends on the travel schedule and their work schedule and stuff. I'd almost guarantee Jay's going to be there. It's because Janine's there as well. Like this is this is That's like true. I mentioned it a lot before. Like this is the week of. Like this is someone's like I scheduled it so that they'd be central. This is Jay's week, which generally, yeah. in at least I, in my experience from just watching it, means it's gonna be one win, one loss. I think, as much as I love her, Janine's gonna lose, and Erwin's gonna win. Because yeah. if. If Jay goes 0-2, storyline story line potential out the window. And there's like what I've noted was every live event has been Roka or Five Horsemen centric. And with True. Merle there, that just elevates the possibility. Yeah. Which means it would I like it's the first match of the first match of the season. So I don't think they immediately jump in like we found our fifth horse in the fill of the spot. That's just, that's quick. But I wouldn't uh -huh. be surprised if it's some sort of tease of we have the fifth horseman or we're talking to yeah. someone. Or if it just yeah. honestly comes down to, um, honestly, I'd be down if just Riley leaves. Leave it with um, Broca, Merle, and Inman, which is a, it's still a solid like three, three first sure. action. I think with Ethan, the only thing I think could, that could be something to wonder about is I don't know what his professional obligations will be. Um, is This is happening at the same time as New York Comic Con, right? Is it? Uh, I don't know. I think because this is, this is in January. Comic Con uh -oh. is in like... But is it is it happening year. during a... Like, I was thinking it was happening during like an event of some sort, but maybe not. No. Not like during um, the I, I event think... itself, but like I was thinking, oh, um, like they were kind of holding it the same weekend as something, so that the travel would. Be... Ellis is hosting a comedy 
thing uh, a day or two before, mm. I think. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that doesn't really matter. I was going to say, you know, if Ethan has like professional obligations while he's out there that could maybe take his mind away from the game, like that could play into it. But if he's just strictly out there for the match and nothing else, then, I mean, I would say it's pretty much an even, an even match. Yes. However, Merle has been incredibly inconsistent. Mm -hmm. I think it comes down to how much he prepares himself because like, I think, oh, 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 who was it? it, it no, it was against Erwin, right? That he lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he had like a 50% win rate or 50% um, accuracy rate. Yeah. That is in, that's not good. And we saw against um, Andrew, I think he had even worse, like a 48, I think. Oh yeah, that was... I don't know what the accuracy yeah. rate was, but it was so, I think uncharacteristic. It, I think Dan needs to come in like ready. He needs to study. He needs. I think he should pull a Roka, which is weird. I think I think he should he should like work with Mara nonstop, like the week the week or so beforehand, maybe in two weeks. Just get a binder full of trivia and just go through it. Go through IMDb, mm -hmm. burn through like online trivia games, just something, because yeah. Yeah, he needs to be ready. Otherwise, he's gonna get gonna get blown out of the water. Sure, I think. Um, I think if Dan wins, it would be interesting because I mean, really, the belt at this point is just kind of traveling from like person to person to person to person. So, if Ethan can't retain, then like I, I mean, when was the last time someone defended the belt? I mean, it would be Sam, but how long ago was that? Six months ago, maybe. Um, he last defended it against Clark in, I think, it would have been the free-for-all title. No, 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 no. It would have been the number one contender's shot that Emma, no. Yeah, the number one contender shot Emma got from the manager bowl, which right. would have, I think that was, yeah, I think it was like March or April. Yeah, so, I mean, it's been a while since, like, since the belt has been defended. It seems like ever since Bibbs got it, it's just kind of been like a one, a one term, <laughs> one term situation. So it'll be interesting to see. But that's really all I have about that particular match is it. I mean, it's a good match because it's two good competitors, but nothing really to speak about. No, no like surprises no major issues just yeah it's it's just it's a, clark, a match clark wolf <laughs> clark wolf dan Merle match basically yeah it's it's almost like it's sort of comforting after everything that happened before and it's just boom yeah. boom and like it, i think it's like a nice how do i say it it's an, it's like a nice little reprieve from every, all the other mm -hmm. heavy hitting matches that we have because even the next one like yeah. Even though we, we we may not be as into it as everyone else is, it's still like a big like headliner thing. Yeah. That's all I have really to say on the match because, like, we'll get into the actual credits scenes around it later. But yeah, just Marl got a TKO. Good on him. That's I think that's his sixth one. Sixth one. He's now up to 10 wins, I believe, which is amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at this burrito in the corner like I am just really hungry. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you, when I was in first grade, my teacher was Mrs. O'Shea. Mm. We're just going to go through my entire history right now. But, uh, no, we can, you can you can transition the matches if you want. It's not just it doesn't have to just be me. <laughs> um well, yeah. I mean, I don't have much more to say about this match too, so Yeah, it's so great just um, the next match we have um next Ken match Matrock versus Alex Damon. Yeah. I mean, that went about the same as I thought it would too. It I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised either way. I was, I, I, if I was to pick, I figured uh, Alex was going to win. 
so I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I was happy with the outcome. Alex seems like a really sweet guy and obviously he's very, very knowledgeable. I would say like for my money, I would say Alex is probably the most knowledgeable competitor in their particular like like field than any of the other competitors like as far as like inner geekdom or even like the singles competitors or doubles competitors if you pick yeah. their strengths and any of the competitors with their strengths or in inner geekdom or anything like that clark both with horror and so on and so forth I would say Alex is probably the most locked in, dialed in, knowledgeable competitor that there is or maybe has ever been. Now, I mean, obviously Sam and Dan and people like that are like more broad. They have more broad knowledge bases. So I'm not going to say Alex is the best competitor we've ever had, but I will say um, for his particular specialty, he's i mean i would compare him to maybe jason inman like he's he's pretty pretty impenetrable impenetrable is that the right word yeah but yeah it's like i think before i like i i i, I tentatively agree with you before i really lock in on that though i'd want to see him versus sam Whitworth, which is still very up in the air yeah if he returns but i wanted i mean to we are like, we, I mean, we, we already kind of saw it in the five way and I mean, Alex did pretty much play him neck and neck in that five way, but it would be interesting to see it like in a one-on-one. -on -one, yeah. One-on-one -on -one situation. But I mean, other than that, I mean, I was, yeah. I'm going to say like, I was happy for Ken that he at least made it a pretty good game, which, I mean, I kind of thought that Alex might run away with it. So, um, I mean, it was, it, it was still pretty, it was still a pretty close match. So, I mean, Ken kind of can hang that on, um, has that to hang his hat on, I guess. Uh, I, I wish I could recap it better, but because I'm not really super familiar with this, I'm not paying like hyper attention. Um, yeah, me neither. Ken, yeah. Ken spun Phantom Menace and Alex spun um, Who Said It, which is just interesting. I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty tough, that's a pretty tough category. Like, I mean, obviously if they're like the major lines a lot of people will know them but like some of those like deep lines i mean it could get really like it could get really like specific so i mean a category like that can really go just about either way so well yeah it's because he seems to do pretty good with them particularly in star wars we see like what's the first line in this movie or what's this character's first line it's it's uh it's tiring yeah I, I well and and also also especially since like so many of the characters speak have like ha speak about the same things like but just with like different like like with different lines but like the basic gist is the same so like maybe liam neeson said something in like the prequels that was a line that sounds a lot like a line that was said in like return of the Jedi. And like, so like I could see like a lot of those lines getting mixed up because like George Lucas loves to say <laughs> like they rhyme. So a lot of the, a lot of the lines, not that they get recycled, but they get, they do get repurposed I'll say into like the same concept, some of the same words, but just like in a different order. So I think that's probably the toughest thing. For me, I would think that would be pretty tough to figure out like who said what. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> I want to contribute more. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah. I, I had a feeling almost that they were going to retire the Star Wars League after this match. So I did too. I was really glad that Knapsack didn't win because, again, with the whole – not even again, we'll get into this after the break – with the whole count, with the whole count Alcy thing, just like I understand behind the scenes why it happened. Uh, it's I'm not criticizing that at all. Just from a story perspective, I don't like where it goes because it's mm-hmm. hey hey Thad, I have you by the balls, do what I want, and it's just it's I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna use the word the term gimme again, even though it's not used in the same context because it was just like a like you. Like, I control you, you give me what I want. And there wasn't like a, oh, you got to work for it or anything, which in these shows you want. And now again, I understand the scheduling conflict. I know that there wasn't another competitor who was available to face Damon. Because you didn't want another Bruce Green to walk in. And you didn't want, um, and Rachel didn't want to compete against Mara. And I'm sure I don't think anyone else was like close enough to rematch against or match against her. So Kalanasi stepped up. I understand that. But yeah. I don't like the ease of it. No. And, you know, going back to, well, talking about the storylines, which this is completely unrelated, but with Christian being the one kind of pulling the strings on this kind of stuff, it kind of makes you wonder, like, like I said, like you said, storyline wise, not in real life, but storyline wise, like, what would the purpose be of sitting on his power for like six months and letting Kalinowski do his bidding for like six months? Why not just have like a commissioner's match, like right off the bat to get his commission commissionership back? Like, it's, I, 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 I guess I like in, in terms, it's, it's just a programming thing where it's like, he wants to do it for the fans. That's why he did it. Um, he, like, Kalinowski was it was his way of not only getting his commissionership back, but also just giving the fans what they want because he's trying to cause the most havoc possible for Thad to try and explain. And he turns the entire league against him. He's a little bit of a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it was like, because I know like personally I've suggested it. I know tons of the fans have suggested the anarchy idea. This is just, yeah. his, his, this is his fun way of giving the fans what they want other than, hey, let's shake things up. Yeah, true. But yeah, I don't really, I don't really have a whole lot to say about the Star Wars um, situation. Mm. Uh, yeah. But congratulations to Alex Damon. He yeah. seems he's, he's, like a really nice guy, and he, like, if he would he like is, to join the Action Army, that would be great. He, he's an intimidating champion in the way that faces should be, where he is a wall. Like he doesn't have, he doesn't have pieces of knowledge where that he, that he doesn't know he doesn't have a way to like shake him to his core he is just you gotta fight your best fight to beat him and i think at this point if he wins one more if he won, wins one more match he has an immediate chance at uh revenge or like a rematch yeah so if it, good luck to anyone else getting that belt yeah agreed agreed <laughs> So next match is... Um, we will actually be going to a break. So, oh. yeah, after the yeah. break, we will be discussing uh, the Inner Geekdom and the singles title match. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's it. Uh, yeah. I don't have, I don't have like, an interesting tradition for this. So, um, see you in like a minute. Bye.
and we're back from the break. I just wanted to let you all know that the fake paper champion has now lost. We have someone who actually matters holding the belt. That is all. And I will say, I'm not referring to Mara, so don't, I don't totally hate women. I'm referring to Roka, so I hate, I hate foreigners. I don't only, totally only hate one women. of those jokes that's here today, people. <laughs> but you're suggesting that you sort of hate women. Uh, oh, oh, only ones managed by Emma Fife. <laughs> so, and Draco doesn't count. That. And Draco is amazing. We love him. You, we you love go, Mark Glenn and Coco. Draco. Yes, we do. Yes, so the first match of this final segment of our last showdown episode of the year <laughs> is Kalinowski versus Mara Kanopic. It's, this, is, this is also a little bittersweet. I mean, the match about the Pepsi, not sponsored. <laughs> I just, it was like it was a pretty, it was a pretty like low energy match, I thought. like I, I would say that's for most of Mara's things i think i think it was actually like high energy per se was the the actual live show title match because it was live but yeah. oh God. it's 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 rough for me because it plays in the whole thing i mentioned with knapsack earlier where it was a gimme sort of shot and i don't like that so it's hoping mark could really put him down like no i am a legitimate champ i fought very real people including you to get here and you can't beat me. But just ask a question in the speed round. Can you hear me? Barely, yes. Yeah, but... no. Because I, I get very dramatic. And I, my, I, I can tell by the bars it doesn't show up. But either way. just And then and I really wanted Mara to win. Just so, like... And again, I was a big fan of Kalinowski. And yeah, his storyline didn't end up that way. But I like his character still. I didn't like this. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was it was just like like I said, low energy match. Like it went to sudden death. So I mean, obviously, like on paper, it's a good match, but it just didn't have the feel of a good match. It just felt like going through the motions. It just felt like going through the motions of a title match. It there was nothing exciting about it. Um, I would say really the only thing to point out about it isn't something that's necessarily exciting, but it just, um, just kind of a little bit worried about like where Mara's head is at. I mean, she yeah. genuinely just didn't seem to be having a good night, a good time. Um, I, I will, I'll offer a little bit of insight into that. But I'm, I'm just going to reference this really quick to see, like, one in particular I missed. Because I, I didn't get it in my notes. But, okay. So this is a, another case of the who said it. So um, Kalinowski spun um, Middle Earth, which I thought he was going to just, like, utterly fail in. That was, like, I was, I was at work. And I was just, you know, sweeping the broom. And Kalinowski got Middle Earth. I'm just like, okay, great. Match is over. Mara won. Game over. Yeah. It's so disappointing. And then Mar got who said it, which just watching it, it was really interesting to see how like difficult the questions were. I think there was one that I got on even a multiple cho- or actually no, I got one on a two and another one on a on a multiple choice. But even aside from all that, it's a that's a tough. That's tough. It is. Yeah, it is. And I mean I guess it's interesting to wonder where the inner geekdom goes from here with Mike holding the belt. Um, Mara, I get the impression that she's probably going to be out for a while. Um, yeah. I so personally, I, I think Inman's it's be... schedule is kind of tricky. So, I mean, I think Rachel's still kind of like in it, why is, but everyone why is else's in... schedule is kind of. Hmm. Why is Inman's schedule tricky? Well, isn't he kind of like busy with, um, is he writing a bunch of stuff? And uh, Last I heard, he was working for someone and the show got canned. So now he's like totally independent. 
Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, then maybe that he's... Maybe he's... Sorry, it's, it's probably something different. I was just... I was under the impression that he was kind of stepping away for a while because his schedule was yeah, kind of busy. Maybe. But... I don't know. I think that's the purpose of them setting up um, Robert Meyer Burnett at the end of this was because of, like... Engaging, like solid engaging competitors are going to be hard to come by. We might not see Mara until like the tournament next year, which I'm sure they're going to keep the engaging tournament in place. Because I think like yeah, like in terms of like we'll we'll, we'll remove um, Mara and Inman from the slates. So you you have Burnett coming back. You have Halavik who did a really solid job in the league. Cushing is obviously the biggest threat in there currently. Um, if Navarro works hardy, he can come back Navarro. Um, and out of those four, there's no one really putting up a solid fight. Um, Keaton, Mar- Marky, Marchi, whatever could come back. Um, Rosie Knight. Haybon. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Haybon and Donica. Because, God, I want more Donica. <laughs> yeah, Donica could, Donica could be a contender. Actually, Johns would be a great contender if oh, he... Yeah, Sean Gr- I see. I'm forgetting all the people that were in it. Yeah. So you have Sean Gerber, um, Donica, Haybon. So I think if you lowered it to like an eight seed rather than a sixteen seed tournament, you might have bet. You might be better off. Yeah, I was gonna really say that. I I would rather see like a tournament with fewer games, fewer matches, and more like selective, um, a more selective like matchup. You don't want. Because we don't want to go back to the same thing last season where it's just a bunch of competitors getting knocked out in the first round and, like, literally knocked out. I think the yeah. only one who wasn't was um, Five versus Washington. Other than mm-hmm. that, I believe they're all knockouts. Maybe um, Halavik versus Navarro. Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, it's it's kind of curious where the inner geekdom will go from here. Um, but really, the only thing I took away from this match was just kind of wondering. I mean, it's the elephant in the room. There was some kind of weird editing going on in the post-match. Yeah. So um, I think we all kind of got the impression that Mara might be done with the schmodown for at least a little while um and not to speculate on what that reason was and definitely not going to call her names or anything which is yeah. completely inappropriate so. uh, but i i do think it's important to point out that it was pretty clear that her head was maybe not completely or at least her heart wasn't completely in it and um, we kind of got that from the post match that um, that the prep work and the schmodown stuff was maybe taking a little bit of a toll on her. So, yeah. Um, like to just um, Danny, one of our wonderful co-hosts, he said he was he said in YouTube comments people were like particularly calling her out on her mental health. Um, Bowties, I'm going to use usernames here because you guys shouldn't be doing this. Um, both guys are cool. Said Mara is kind of a bitch, which I don't really get. Trey Collerman said, "Is Mara bipolar or something?" I don't know. And then Jason Fast Horse said, "Damn, Mara was super salty and nasty in defeat." Like, I I think, yeah, she can be salty, whatever. But Kalinowski was being a bit of an ass. He was playing a character that's fine, but still. And frankly. If she does have mental health issues, that's fine. We shouldn't be harassing her for it. We shouldn't be thinking any less of her. Because I know, at least I believe, everyone on this panel has some sort of mental health deterioration or disease or something. So it hits a lot of us personally. On top of that, you could just also be, you know, a decent human being and not attack someone. There's that too. Yeah. Yes. We all love Mara and we want the best for her and I mean, if preparing for the showdown really was causing issues for her personal mental health, then obviously she needs to address that um, with no uh, 
no judgment from people, no criticism from people. So I hope, I mean, I hope we see her again in the inner geekdom or at the very least that she, you know, hangs around with Dan while he's still competing. Like, I hope it's not like the last we see of her, but it does seem to me like she had, something had soured her on the situation. Like just from the post, post-match post comments, it seemed like something had gotten to her, whether that was internal, external, or both. Um, it seemed like something had gotten to her. Um. I, 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 I don't know because I'm, I'm thinking back to when she won the title at the live event and she says like oh yeah whatever this is just movie trivia or plays it off very lightly but she was really happy to win that like mm-hmm. you saw in, Inman like, yeah. you got like the Brandy Burry wine or something and he, just, he gracefully handed it over and it was it was a very really sweet thing and she could tell she was excited and then Mike's walked up and was like no 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 my show I will fight you at Spectacular or something. Yeah. And I'm sure, I, I'm I'm guessing she was prepared for that. I would hope they prepared her for that um, at the live event. Um, I'm pretty sure she did, but I, I, I'd still be salty about that. I mean, but it was, it still, it still took away her moment. Whether she was prepared for it or not, it did take away her moment, which is kind of, I can understand her being a little bit upset about that. Um, but um, I mean, I don't know if it goes back to that or if it's something more recent or if it's just, who knows, but yeah. yeah see, I don't know. I don't know personally, however, just to backtrack onto the less serious topic, because I realize this is a very personal thing. And if Mara is a fan of the show, which I doubt she is, but if she is, we don't want to be dragging. <laughs> we don't want to be like focusing on it too long. Like, like my, my handwriting is terrible, but you can have like, you know, for the intergated tournament, a, a great AT tournament or six, Eight, two, eight seed tournament. <laughs> Basically, you could have Mara could come back. You could have Jared Habon, Robert Meyer Burnett, Adam Holavik, Rachel Cushing, uh, H- Hector Navarro, Emma Fife, and Mark Donica. While I'm leaving Jay Washington out, which I would love to have him in, that's still like a think- really solid eight seed. I think I'd leave Fife out, but that's probably just personal bias. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I put Fife in because she got to the second round. Um, yeah. like, I wouldn't put Keaton Markey in because I think she's not as competitive as Navarro. And Burnett just seems to be very story-centric, so having him in is pretty much a necessity. But other than that, you know, yeah. Halavik got to the semifinals. Um, Donica played very well, but I thought it, like, his mental health was very bad that day, so I'm going to give him benefit of the doubt and say he could have been better. He also, you know, challenged mm-hmm. him for the title. And Rachel, of course, is... Rachel, she's gonna be in. She has, if she has a time in her schedule, she's going to destroy that bracket. Yeah. Or it could be, I mean, I don't know Chance Ellison. I don't know if he has energy gym chops. No. No? I mean, um. it, it, because his strengths inside the singles aren't that good. I wouldn't mind getting, say, Ben in the tournament because he said he's wanted to do it. Yeah. I wouldn't mind, yeah. like, a Ken Knapsack in there, who I think he could do a solid job because he's like, he, again, he's very Star Wars, but I think he could do a solid job at uh, Marvel as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, cause I, in, like, but Inner Geekdom isn't, like, you know, it's not dying for competitors like the Star Wars League is. So I, I think... It's, yeah. Yeah, I think adding new players it's right still now... Would be nice to get idea. some... It would still be nice to get some more competitive... Uh, competitive people in there, so... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't mind getting people like, say, if there's like a one on one versus Dorian Parks and Rosie Knight, that'd be fine. Because we do, yeah. we, like, we want to like enforce new blood, but also these people didn't get very good chances to shine. Give them these better opportunities to like show how good they are. Because in a mm-hmm. five way, you get very drowned out because in a one on one, even if you even if you lose, you still have the chance to be recognized. The reason we pick, we, we pick up the names Jared Haybon and Mark Donica so much was because they won. Hey, Bond swept the table, got four KOs, and Donica beat uh, Halavik, which was a very, very tight match. If it wasn't for that, not mm-hmm. like, and Halavik wouldn't be remembered, and Donica would, I don't know. I think situations situa- in verse, we probably forget about one of them, but because Donica got to the title match, we remember him. But mm-hmm. either way. Yeah. Uh, 
I would, I would be curious. I would be curious about like just kind of talking about other competitors. Um, Mike Carlson. Yes. Um, I mean, he did decent when he was. I mean, like I think he's kind of a potential. Like, he has potential. Um, Andre the Black Nerd. I would be interested I'd be to so, see. So so happy. I mean, I don't know, like, how well he knows Star Trek. I don't know how well he knows Lord of the Rings. But the comic book stuff, I think he'd be pretty, pretty legit on. I think he probably knows Harry Potter pretty good. If there was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles category, he'd probably, like, sweep it. And I feel like, yeah. That should be the so, next bag, because that's, like, that's a pretty nerdy thing. It is. So, I, I mean... I would like to see him compete. I don't know how well he would do, but I mean, I think he's definitely someone to kind of, kind of to give a chance to earn to to get some new new competitors into the inner geekdom. So, yeah. Hmm. Is there is there any, so that is that a, is there something else you wanted to comment on this match? No, I think that's pretty much all I got. I would say congratulations to Mike Kalinowski, but I really am not feeling too, too too congratulatory towards him. So, yeah, it is what it is. I'm sorry, Mara, for you losing your belt. Mike, okay. But, yep, I'm done. I, I look forward to Mike losing the belt, mostly because I want more of the corruption storyline. However it's possible, I want it to happen. But yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, like now that now that Christian has exposed um, his master plan and how Mike was a pawn in all of it. It'll be interesting to see how Mike reacts. Is if, if Mike is like if he like becomes a shell of himself, or whether he like fights back twice as hard. And like it, like creates a bigger monster than they could have expected. Because I forget what match it was, but Ken seemed to step up. Like I think Mike was really disappointed after something, and Ken walked up, like picked him up, and was like, "You got this. We are fighting the corruption." I wouldn't, because because Ken is managing him. I wouldn't mind if Ken like took the like the adversarial role, like the uh -huh. Pop the Vader say, where it's like, "You have done. We have done well." But as now we need to finish the job. I think that would be fun because Chance is going to have a run in singles. Like, win or loss against Janine, he's going to have more matches. Uh, Ken obviously has a uh, or actually everyone, <laughs> everyone in that faction has a belt besides Chance, so they'll probably be rigging it to get like Chance more single shots and stuff. So they can be the first faction yeah. to exclusively hold all the belts. Yeah. All right, time for the time for the big, the big to do. Erwin versus Roka. <laughs> Roka lost. Roka lost. <laughs> oh, he I'm did. Just... He lost. Oh, I'm so happy. I did. He he did like, lose. The fact that it's not Ben it disappoints me. The fact that it's not someone with a personality disappoints me. But I'm just glad it's not Roka. Yeah, the only the only disappointment to me is well, there's a few. One is Roka. Roka didn't like. I he could have been putting on a front, but Roka just didn't seem like he was like all in. Like he, I mean, he just didn't seem that into it. I didn't think. But even if he was, even if he was kind of just trying to keep a cool like calm collected demeanor um it's still i mean he's still uh going to compete apparently he he said he's going to compete until he dies so yeah but um i, I will say that um it would have been nice to see someone beat Roka in a very 
fiery way, like someone that like Brooklyn doesn't so like, like Ben. <laughs> Like someone that either Roka just doesn't like or Roka get TKO'd or um I mean just it would have been nice to see Roka go down in a very like bombastic a way. Ball of fire. Right. I felt like I mean he lost, but it was a very quiet loss. It didn't feel like a very like a big deal. So that's the only disappointment I have. I would have rather seen him lose in a way that was much more like grading on him as a person <laughs> so um but other than that yes a loss is a loss i will say that so of course that just means it gives him time to become the first three-time belt holder so that's the three that's time. the negative three side of it <laughs> yeah because because yeah. you no, know, the day Roker retires is the day, like I'm not sure if you remember, but you know when um Alan Rickon passed away, everyone went to um Harry Potter land and like put up their wands. Mm-hmm. I'm just imagining the day that John Roker retires, everyone goes to his little train station in Universal Studios, takes their outlaw masks and shirts, and starts waving them in the wind while playing the the Cloud City theme. <laughs> <sighs> But until yeah. then, we got a new chip. <laughs> Which we do. Was one of the funniest moments in Throwdown history. <laughs> Apparently, our new champ is Jay Washington. <laughs> to- <laughs> okay, okay. But we need to focus on the important part. Is in the speed round, they were both so terrified to get the wrong answer. They didn't guess San Luis. So like, yeah, playing, I knew. Um, I knew the answer too. Like that was the I one. Would, that was like the one. Like, I- because he's he's not the Bear Jew and he's not Brad Pitt, so it's like only the person is Sam Levine. So I just Sam Levine. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that was like that was like the one I'm like, I'm like, do they not know it or they're just afraid to answer? Like so <laughs> Sam just like, okay, match is over. I get the <laughs> which. Oh man, honestly, you know what would have been amazing if he like if he legitimately like threw down like. Okay, it's three way now. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been amazing. He couldn't have won, but would have been like I I honestly would have been all for like <laughs> it would be the biggest blue balls of the entire like history of sports even if middle of the match they got this wrong and Sam just took the like took the belt and walked out. It's like I'm the champ again. Just ran home. I, I would have been like... fully there for it. Like Chris okay, just, I'm unretired. Bye. No, it's like yeah. no. Sam could literally be like, I defended the belt twice. I have the automatic re- rematch, and I don't care. Here's my rematch. I'm just taking the belt. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was a pretty funny moment. Another funny moment for me was when, like, okay, maybe not funny. Ha ha. Maybe just like. I found it amusing, but like when Jay was enthusiastically trying to shake Roka's hand and (laughs) Roka just was having none of it, like I was just like, I don't cheer for Roka, but I was like, Go, go, I was like, Thank you. I was like, Don't shake his hand, he's being an idiot. So, you need to jump off the hate hate train. He he got his win. He got his he got his win. He didn't get his win with the people that he's been with for you know months and months and years and years. But he got his win with someone he's known for all of two weeks. But he got his win. So I guess that's all that matters. I don't have much to say about this other than that little speed round quip. Um. Yeah, I was very like when when I got to Roka's uh, last question, I also guessed Kevin Costner. I've been thinking about it for a while. I was like, yeah, Jim Parsons was the correct answer, but oh man, what was the last question? Um, who plays the head astronaut? Um, engineering, or who plays the engineer head of engineering in NASA in 2016? Seven figures. Oh yeah, I, I think I knew that. Yeah. Um. 
yeah, I, I honestly just, I guessed wrong, whatever. But I heard him be, I heard him say, you know, Kevin Costner. And I'm like, no. And I saw yeah. Carl Chase, and you're a winner. And I just, I jumped up and screamed. Even if I, even if I didn't, even if I was guessing, I wouldn't, I would have guessed Jim Parsons over Kevin Costner. Because yeah. Kevin Costner would have been, would not have been a five point question like that would have that wouldn't have been five point worthy i don't think so like if if i were guessing between like if i were guessing i would have guessed jim parsons but i'm pretty sure i knew that so but yeah then yes then we have a new champion for however long it's going to be at least till january yeah. but you know what this means right it's even easier what? to get Ben versus Roka too. This is true, especially since he's. I mean, he said he had no intentions of hanging it up. He's he said he's going to continue playing. So I, at this point, I don't like... know what it, what it takes for Roka to lose because he keeps getting handed like this is a sign that you can be, you know, the goat. He's not going to be, but he can be, and that's what he keeps hearing because he keeps winning these titles. I really want to know what it takes for him to be so defeated. He gives it all up. He was going to after Founding Fathers. If he lost to Bibiani, that would have been it. I need to see what it takes for Roka for the beast to be slain. I need to see what Roka just throws it away. I think if Founding Fathers takes another big loss, and if someone like Bateman or God, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think he's in it. Like, I think, I think he could lose to. Finstock and he would continue to play like I just I don't know I mean the only thing I can think of is like if personally like if his um like his personal life gets to a point or his professional life or whatever gets to a point that um gets to that point that he needs to concentrate on himself and everything then um I think that's what we will see as being the end of Roka. But for right now, I think he's pretty much he's pretty much stuck. And I think we have lost James. Hello, are you there? Hello. Please tell me we did not lose everything. I don't think so. It's just, it's still it's still says it's, it's broadcasting. Yeah, like, I stayed on here the whole time. Lose. 
Yeah, okay. I stayed no, on I, here I, pretty I much the I kept saying, like, hey, Melissa, your video is frozen. I typed something to talk to you, and then it crashed. So, Oh, gosh. Do you, do you remember what the last thing I said was before it went? No. All right. So, yeah, let's just, I think we just give the outro now. Okay. Right. Did you oh. want to talk about... Um, Burnett and Nost? I mean, we, we already kind of talked about Burnett a little bit. Um um, is there anything I'd, else? I'd, I'd honestly just say, um, sorry for the edits, uh, video crash, whatever. And uh, right about time was when we need to start signing off. Um, like goodbye to Nost, and then we transition into going like giving goodbyes. Does that sound good? That is fine. Yes. All right. All right so give me a second. Sorry for that, guys. The uh, broadcast crash, whatever. Um, like I was going to say before we got rudely cut off by my terrible internet, uh, we should be signing off right now. Uh, at the end of the match, we saw Nost leaving the show, which is very sad, but he was it was a good time having him there. I, I know personally, I love his presence more than most. I think he was one of the best parts of the horseman consistently. And I look forward to just listening to him on the top 10 show every week. I know I'm a traitor. And, you know, Burnett. Just, I mean, I, I'm excited for Burnett. I think we talked about it mostly. Uh, Melissa, was there anything else you wanted to throw in with that? Yeah, well, just, yeah. I mean, just like you said, uh, no, it'll be disappointing. It'll be, it'll be sad to see his like, his grumpy old man personality go because it was just amusing to me, like his dry sense of humor. So, definitely will miss that. And then, um, yeah, Robert Meyer was like, I think was kind of like the major surprise for me of the night, like in a positive way. Um, just because he's been kind of away from the Collider family for so long, which with Christian um, at the end of this match talking about how the Schmodown will be moving away from Collider might explain Robert Meyer Renick coming back. But um, with him uh, being away from Collider for so long, I kind of had given up hope that we would ever see him again in the showdown. So um, seeing it cut to him, I like, I actually like was very excited in that moment. So I'm definitely super excited to see Robert Meyer Burnett back next year. Um, so, but yeah, that's really all I have. All right. So for the final time of the year, uh, your socials no socials but you can find me on facebook at the movie trivia Schmodown facebook page as well as the action army facebook page action army we're gonna continue to go strong even <laughs> even as tentative as things are at the moment we are going to continue to be action army proud in the meantime so i'll still be there yes um, like we said, our dads have been divorced, so we're not sure what's going to happen within the show. But as our own show, we will be here. We will continue to be action we, we, we will support both of our lovely dads in this tumultuous time. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Temecula Film Guide. That is at T-E-M-E-C-U-L-A. You can find uh, Ben and Andrew on Twitter at Ben Bateman Media and at Andrew Guy. You can find their Instagrams under the same at. You can also find us at Call to Action Pod on Twitter and find their general amalgamation of shows on Twitter at Team Action Show. Do not forget to support the Team Action Patreon as well as the Schmodown Patreon, which is now very involved. Uh, it's a shame we couldn't we didn't have time to get into it today. I could say very shortly I support the change and I hope that it makes the series somewhat profitable in the near future. Um, Melissa, any final words before I do a little outro? Nope. Just see you in 2019. Yeah. 
Um, and actually, that's, that's a little misleading. We will, we will continue to be putting out content until the next season starts. As you all know, we're not just Modown fans. Um, we'll be doing more of the things that we, could, that we talked about. Or we, we would normally consider variety segments in the past. We'll be going our best films of the year, maybe our Oscar predictions, our own nominations if we were to host the Oscar, or not host, but like, you know, give our awards brackets. We could be doing little one-offs. Uh, Matt is a very much is a very big fan of The Office. We could talk about that. There's a lot of things we can do. If you have an interest in something you want us to do, or something we want to cover, leave it in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, I look forward to putting out some original content, not just reactions. And other than that, have a great holiday season. Have a great new year. Have a great following your New Year's resolutions for two days and then picking out on a pint of ice cream because I know I'll do that. And yeah, this is a strange feeling, but see you next year.